In America today, there is a strong emphasis in many churches upon music and musical performances in worship services. Preaching the Word of God is often placed in the background, minimized, and undervalued as either not a vital part of worship or not relevant to today's youth or culture. What biblical principles or passages would you preach upon in order to declare the timeless relevance and the centrality of the preaching and teaching of the Word of God to our generation. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Pastor Smith. You've again asked a question that touches on some of the most vital issues that we are called upon to face and with which we must wrestle. And as I reflected a bit on that question, I thought it would be good simply to do a quick flyover of what the scriptures set before us as that which will be blessed and owned of God for the progress of the gospel and for the maturation of the people of God in their life together. And if we start with God's prophetic promise of what he will do under the new covenant, you have that wonderful promise in Jeremiah 3.15 where God says, I will give them shepherds according to my heart. And then he describes those shepherds, and this is the way he describes them, who will feed them not with mime, not with dance, not with drama, not with musical groups, who will feed them with knowledge and with understanding. God says that his commitment to his people in his love and concern for their well-being, likened to a flock of sheep, is to give them shepherds who can feed them with knowledge and with understanding. That is, who have competence of gift to open up and to apply the scriptures that his sheep might be led into the green pastures of an ever-growing knowledge of the Word of God. And then when we see that promise coming to fulfillment in the person and work of our Lord, who lays upon the apostles, first of all, the task of the church, what are the directives that Christ gives to them? Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Going therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And what is to follow? People who are made disciples through the proclamation of the word, for as we see the apostles obeying the Lord's commission throughout the book of Acts, what was central to their evangelism? Again, it wasn't gathering a group of people with pop music, with a little flavor of Jesus in the gospel. No, there is a rich vocabulary of verbs. Proclaiming is at the heart of that family of words. It was by proclamation, it was by declaration, it was by dialoguing in the synagogue and in the marketplace. It was the centrality of authoritative proclamation of the Word of God by which people were gathered into clusters of disciples manifesting their attachment to Christ in baptism, then the apostles were faithful to their commission. Those disciples gathered into worshiping assemblies, a new covenant, living temple of Christ, are being taught all things whatsoever Christ commanded them, so that the teaching ministry becomes central to the maturation of those bodies of Christ raised up throughout the Roman Empire. And we see this so clearly in a passage such as Ephesians chapter 4, where Paul mentions the ascended Christ gives pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints unto works of service. 
Yes, there is body life, for he goes on to say that the body is built up through that which every joint supplies. So you have the specially gifted men ministering to the people of God and the people of God ministering to one another, growing up into the fullness of Christ. So the prophetic promise is, I will give them shepherds who will feed them with knowledge and understanding. The apostolic commission is, make disciples, baptize, teach them. Then we have the apostolic example. The Lord, by a mighty outpouring of the Spirit, gathers in 3,000 on the day of Pentecost. Thirty years later, when Luke writes the account of what happened on that day and the subsequent history, this is what he says, Acts 2.42, And these all continued steadfastly in what? The apostles' doctrine or teaching? in fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and the prayers. Where's this emphasis upon the dominance of a multi-leveled uh, three-ring circus of musical ministry? It is simply not found in the New Testament. Did the people of God sing praise when they gathered? Of course they did. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 makes this abundantly clear. In Ephesians 5, 19, Colossians 3, 17, emphasize the singing of the people of God. And what is that singing? It is the outgrowth of the word of Christ dwelling richly in them. And how does it get to dwell richly in them? when pastors and teachers after God's own heart feed them with knowledge and with understanding. And then when we turn to the pastoral epistles, the two letters to Timothy and the letter to Titus, here we have Paul conscious that the apostolic age is drawing to a close. The church in its new covenant permanent configuration is before the apostle's eye. For remember, he says to Timothy, these things I write, hoping to come to you shortly, but if I tarry long, I want you to know how men ought to behave themselves in the house of God, the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And what is central in the instructions given to Timothy and to Titus? Central to that instruction is the constant reiteration of the emphasis Till I come, give attendance to the reading, that is the reading of scriptures, to exhortation, to teaching. Take heed to yourself and to your teaching. In doing this, you will save yourself and those that hear you. Preach the word. These things command and teach. If you teach the brethren these things, you shall be a good minister of Jesus Christ. It is clear from the pastoral epistles that the ongoing nurture and health of churches is dependent upon a ministry centered in, not exclusively of, but centered in, the consistent, responsible, accurate, spirit-empowered proclamation, explanation, and application of the Word of God as contained in the scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments. So then, in the face of this present obsession with music, we pick up our Bibles and almost at any point where we open them and read, we find that this whole concept that has inundated much of the evangelical church is simply not rooted in the Word of God. And like any period in church history, there needs to be that determination, what says the Scripture. And as Isaiah said, to the law, to the testimony, if they speak not according to this Word, there is no light in them. So Jeff, Pastor Smith, my friend Jeff, I would say that in the light of these current trends, as with so many other things, I believe Jesus would say, you do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. God's power with God's means result 
in God's blessing, and no man-made substitute can take the place. Amen. Yeah.